Hey guys, it's Charlie. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. I'm still in the air. If you remember the last episode, or if you remember the ending of the last episode, uh, we left, uh, left, I was on my way to the pyramids. And look how fast our plane's going, man. I got the speed up on this thing to, like, look at this. Almost Mach 2. Pretty much Mach 2. We're going really, really fast. I decided that we were going way too slow for this plane design. And you know what? We're gonna go faster. So I got myself uh, up above 13k now, around 13k, where the atmosphere is a little thinner, and I'm pushing this thing. It's going 700 meters per second now. Very cool. Uh, it's up. It's up high enough to where the atmosphere is super thin, but not too high to where it can't get the intake air that it needs to run. Uh, if I take a look at my cockpit, we've got um, yeah, the flow is starting to go down. I guess uh, we've got a pretty high effective airspeed here which is pretty good and uh, that's through the uh, intake and stuff so yeah we're going pretty we're doing pretty well here uh, and we're going at 778 meters per second now this is how this plane is supposed to be flown I should have did this a long time ago I really should have now what happens here if I kill this or if I untoggle this right watch our speed it drops very fast not so fast that it's not worth doing, but you'll notice that it's not running at all, right? We're up too high now. So the only way I can run this is through wet mode, I guess, uh, where it's just, it's just pulling a whole bunch of, uh, it's not really taking in the air, I guess. So I don't really know, I don't really understand how this works. Um, I haven't personally played Kerbal Space Program before with an engine that toggled modes like this other than, uh, I think the rapier, but that was doing it automatically. I didn't have to do anything for that, so. Um, not really sure if my wings are even gonna do anything, but angling myself that way will do it. We need to get ourselves pointed towards that little beacon there. Because that's where the pyramids are, guys. Yeah, going to the pyramids, whoa. Yeah, we're not, we're not catching a whole lot of air up here. 19,000 now. There you go, guys. Just wanted to show you this plane is capable of some pretty good speed here. Um, I'm trying to kind of test the waters and see how fast I can go with it. Um, doesn't have a good rate of acceleration. Oh, look at this. We got a signal now. Ha! We have a signal. Let's open up the cargo bay. Actually, going to kill the engine, I think. Probably should. I'm going to kill it for a second. Uh, let's go ahead and run the atmospheric analysis. Uh, no, review the data and transmit it. Ooh, we're taking some serious electrical power to do this. Uh-oh. We're going to run out of power? Am I going to ruin all the fun? Come on, you can do it. You can do it, come on. Actually, no, the engine takes power. It takes electrical power. I think so. It looks like it does. Oh, just barely. Yep, so we're low enough now to where the air breathing engine can kick in. And that will recharge the battery. Go higher. But I do need this battery charge, so I probably shouldn't go so high that this can't actually work. Oh, there we go. We have a blip on the map. That is where the pyramids are. So last chance, guys. I'm not going to show map view. Um, just because I don't want you guys to know where it is. You go find it yourselves. Um, I won't show the map view yet. Although I probably already showed it in, a, in another episode or something. But yeah, whatever. I don't think I can do about that. Uh, this is actually doing pitch and roll and stuff like that. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to change this to where it doesn't do anything on pitch or roll. You are only yaw. Yeah, I'm right. So this doesn't, well, not necessarily right. This doesn't, uh, it doesn't look like this actually takes electric power, but what it does is it shuts off the alternator. So I'm not generating any new electric power. That's how that's working. Okay. Uh, we have a connection again, so let's see if I can transmit anything. Yep. Oh, that's an atmospheric analysis. I don't have the yeah, I don't have the battery for that. Surface sample. 
Yeah, I don't have the battery for I might have the battery for this. There we go. That's easy. Okay. So there's the pyramids. We're coming up on them. Your last chance to back out, guys. Before it gets spoiled for you. Craft file for this plane. I've decided I'm going to upload it for you guys. You won't be able to do it unless you have all the mods I do. Or at least unless you have all the mods that, that comes with these parts. And if you're in career mode, you're going to have to unlock those nodes. But luckily, Kerbal Space Program is pretty modular. You can kind of put a craft file into your game, into your save game. And uh, if you don't have the parts for it, it just flat out like won't let you load it. So it's not like it's going to ruin your game or anything. You just can't load that craft. But this plane's new name is Frankenstein. That's, <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of in the last episode when I introduced it. And I was like, you know what? We're going to stick with it. So this is Frankenstein. And Frankenstein is actually quite stable, which you wouldn't think it with a name like Frankenstein it would be. But very, very cool plane. It's definitely getting the job done very well with Ferrum Aerospace Research. If you're not playing with Ferrum Aerospace Research, um, I imagine it's still going to fly really well. I imagine anyway. But it was designed to be really good with FAR. So uh, you may, I don't know if you need it or not, but you might actually need to be using remote tech in order to load the plane too uh, because of the antenna. Oh, and, and TAC life support. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to re-upload the craft. Um, I just remembered. Of course, you guys haven't seen this episode yet, so I guess it won't matter, will it? Um, yeah, I need to kill that engine. We're going too fast. Um, I need to make sure I upload this without any of the specialty parts installed, like TAC life support and uh, the antenna for remote tech. So I will make sure that, well, actually, pretty much everything in the cargo bay. I think the cargo bay will be empty. That sounds good, because everything in the cargo bay is kind of like a modded modded parts so okay everything in the cargo bay will be empty in the craft file you'll have to fill the cargo bay with whatever you want to fill it with that sounds good we'll do that okay you guys oh look at this oh yeah I'm liking this look at the terrain that's awesome and there they are there's our anomaly and there's no way I can land in there not gonna happen Uh, no, it's not going to happen. So we're going to have to use the parachutes for landing in this. Uh, I don't want the front two parachutes to load. So I'm going to put those on a separate stage. Uh, the other three parachutes I'm all right with. I'll just recover the vessel. This, this, this flight's earned itself, so we'll cover the vessel. Okay, so let's dip down. Ooh, look at that. Look at the pyramids. Let's get the waypoint off. I don't want to see it anymore. Well, I guess I have to because of... Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I've never seen them before. I've never seen any of these anomalies before. I've heard of them. I've just never seen them before. So that's cool. Uh, let's make another pass. Yeah, we're just going to kill the engines. Pick it up. And... Parachutes. And... Kill it. There we go, we're in a stall. And parachutes will open. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Not slowing down nearly as much as I thought we would.
Yeah, I gotta cut these lines. Cut that shoot. And cut this shoot. There we go. Oh yeah, we're gonna come down at a nice... It's not really the best speed necessarily, but I do have an engine. I can use it to slow us down some more. Look at that. I kind of wish this little blip would go away, but maybe once I, maybe once I complete the contract, it will go away. But these are pretty big. Let's turn ourselves this way. go turn the engine on a little bit just slow ourselves slow our descent a little bit activate the air brakes oh we're flipping over no don't go don't go upside down no oh it worked. Kill it. Oh, we were going upside down for a second there. I thought it was going to be the end of us. It worked pretty well, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, parachutes are still on to us. I'm not sure why. Is that just a glitch, or... Let's cut these. And cut. There we go. Okay. We have made it to the pyramids, guys. Let's check these things out. What we got? Get rid of Kerbal Engineer. Get rid of all this stuff. I don't need this stinking stuff on my screen. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm thinking that we open this up. I'm on the mountains, so I don't know how how helpful this will be, being in the mountains. But, uh, you know, let's just jump down here and uh, take some stuff. This thing here, for example. Uh, probably should have done that before... Uh, Probably should have done that before climbing out. Wow. Glitched again. Come on. Snagged up on our stuff. There we go. run the scanner yep there we go okay so what do we have to do with these pyramids how do we how do we pass this oh contracts take a picture of the sun uh, take a picture of the sun using a space telescope offer expires in zero seconds does this mean it never expires, or does it mean it already expired and I just happen to, like, somehow work my way into getting it? I don't, I don't care. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Um, where is this? Investigate the pyramids. EVA and the pyramids. Okay. I just need the EVA and the pyramids. So do I need to actually be on top of the pyramid? Or I bet I have to be inside this, this little area. Okay. That makes sense. So let's do that. Let's turn our engine back on. And I'm going to open it up over here. Uh, yeah, vessel type EVA on the pyramids. Okay. So wait till it says location pyramids. There's the check mark. So now we'll just... Oh, look at that. 
It's like a little Kerbal. Here's the eyes, little mouth. Got a hat with three little... What? <laughs> that's cool. Oh man, that's cool. All right, um, let's try, let's run all signs just in case we missed an experiment or something. Um, might as well have that. Uh, cancel. Um, no. Fine. Okay, no, no science to be had. So we'll EVA. And I think that's it. Yeah, look, oh, look at that. There's an inscription on the statue. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? Huh? Which creature has one voice yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? Ah, yes, the Sphinx. The great Sphinx. Uh, Jebediah Kerman, well done. <laughs> a Kerbal. I was gonna say, like, because it, it said a great Sphinx up here, and I was like, as I said it, I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> a Kerbal becomes four-footed, three-footed, and two-footed. I guess I'm lost with that. Four-footed because he's... I, I don't know. Uh, explain that joke to me, guys, if you guys get it. I knew that one, he says. <laughs> if you guys get that, uh, explain to me how that is a thing. Uh, anyway, so that's it. That's the pyramids. Now, here's a cool thing. Can I get home? Uh, can I get home and land? Should I try or should I just recover the vessel? Uh, I'm going to need to get a better, better running start, though. So let's actually come through this gap when we take off. Uh, yeah, and see if I can get up over that over that hill there. If there's one plane I have confidence that can do it, it's this one. Yeah, for sure. I don't have any parachutes left. Um, so, it is what it is. Okay, let's turn around. And full thrust. with air breathing mode. Well, that's a piece of cake with that mode on. Oh, that's that's simple. That's almost too easy. With that mode on, it's a piece of cake to get off the ground. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So I will fly. I'm telling you guys, this plane, it looks weird. And at first I was like, man, I need to make a whole bunch of changes to this. But this is still the maiden voyage. I have not reloaded the game. I have not recovered the vessel. I have not launched it a second time. This is still the absolute first flight and it has gone all the way to the poles and got some science there. We went to we went to Scott's crater. We landed. We got the three seismic uh, readings that it needed at the crater. Then we took off as hilly as the as the uh, land was. We flew to the uh, the pyramids, which was a pretty cool thing to see. Um yeah that's just awesome i think we're gonna be doing a lot with this plane and then i can cr i can also swap out if i have a mission where i have to take certain people certain places or something you know like uh in a situation where you if you play gap giving aircrafts a purpose or whatever if you play that um which i don't have in this i don't have in this campaign not because i don't like it but because it would take up like all my time flying planes and it's kind of detracts from the overall mission to put a base on every planet, but um, you can swap this cargo bay out for a crew cabin, and boom, now you have now you have cargo or now you have passenger capacity. Pretty cool. They take up the same amount of space. It might be a little more weight for the crew cabin, so you might have to figure out how to adjust things if you do that. But it's possible. Okay, guys, so we're back. Um, it says it's going to be we're going to be there in three minutes and twenty seconds, but. Honestly, uh, with the speed increasing as it is, uh, I don't think that'll be the case. Plus, uh, on top of that, I have time acceleration at four times. So really, we should be there in about less than a minute. Uh, about 100 kilometers away now. And uh, yeah, very cool. I have like a little bit less than half the fuel left that I started with, a full, full tank. So you know that you can go pretty much anywhere you want in this plane. 
Okay, guys, welcome back. We are approaching the KSC. Uh, I cannot see it. I don't know where it is. Uh, but I do know that it's below me. Uh, right there. There it is. So we are way too high. But that's okay. We're just going to dive down real quick. And I'm actually going to probably start heating up if I dive too quickly. If I dive too quickly. But... Maybe not. Nope. Our engine just kicked on. There you go. The air breathing part of our plane. There we go. Let's not dive too quickly here. I don't want my plane to fall apart. Whoa, the G-forces are crazy. Let's pull ourselves around here. Try to come at the KSC. We don't have our runway fully upgraded yet, otherwise I'd have lights, um, which would be really nice to have right about now, but I'm pretty confident in my ability to land this plane in the dark, so that is what it is. Maybe I can do it on the runway or not. If not, then at least on the grass pad beside it. Landing a plane, especially with Ferrum Aerospace Research, is one of the harder things to do in Kerbal Space Program. Certainly not the hardest. I think probably, I think anyway, most people could probably agree that docking is one of the harder things to do, if not the hardest thing to learn how to do and get good at. Um, I don't think I have much of a problem with it. Although I don't really rendezvous very well. I do need to practice that. And I don't dock necessarily like a pro or anything, but uh, I'm good enough at it to where I, I just, I don't consider it to be a, a part where I have a problem, so. There's probably much better ways to do it than the way I do it, but oh well. Anyway, landing a plane for me is like the hardest thing for me. Um, I can fly, no problem. I don't have a problem with the controls to fly, and I'm fairly okay. I guess I'm okay uh, at designing the planes and designing crafts. Um, and I'm a, I'm a pretty decent pilot, I think, but the problem is always with landing. And that's why I put parachutes on my planes if I know I'm going to be traveling someplace that does not have a smooth landing, sp landing place. Or really on all my plane designs have it. Uh, and this plane is using real chutes for the parachutes. Okay, I'm going to have to like really do different parts if I'm going to upload this as a, as a craft file. Because <laughs> I'm using a lot of mods. Um, a lot of modded parts here. Not that uh, normal parachutes won't work or anything. It's just I've chosen to use the real chutes instead. Okay, let's get ourselves lined up here. We're not doing real well on the lineup part here, but it's all right. 210 meters per second, coming in a little fast. And I'm trying to get myself to line up here. There we go. Coming in a really steep, too. I do need to get down a little bit more. There we go. A little bit to the right. Line ourselves up a bit. There's a mod that helps, that can help you line up your crafts to the runways, but I do not have it, obviously. Yeah, we're uh, not coming in straight, that's for sure. May still be able to pull off this landing, though. Ooh, coming in really, really steep. Oh, touchdown. We got it. <laughs> well, we did not land very gracefully on the lot on the landing pad, uh, on the landing strip, but we did get it. So there we go. We're on the landing pad. Let's recover the vessel. All right, so we were able to recover. Uh, it's just called New Plane. I didn't even have a name for it. Like I launched it and I was like, yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, Mission summary for the new plane, we ended up recovering 55 science on top of the science we already transmitted. We have a total of 480 science now. We ended up recovering 48,127 funds. I think this craft is only like 50, like low 50,000s. So um, really the only thing it cost us was fuel and uh, a little bit of the parachutes. That's it. Pretty good. No real experience gain for Jebediah. He's pretty experienced in doing that stuff already. So, we have 400, 480 science. Uh, that is enough to unlock something. 
I don't know what I want to unlock yet, though. I think what I kind of want to unlock is I want to start down this path down here. Uh, this is getting towards our habitation stuff, our short-term habitation, long-term habitation. I want to kind of get that going, but a more important thing for me anyway is the science tech, uh, advanced science tech and uh, specialized uh, science tech because it's gonna give me some of the things that I need for interplanetary travel, like um, some of these little freezer chambers that I kinda want. It gives me the surface analyzer, but it also gives me the GravMax negative gravioli detector. And this is a science experiment, which we can use in any biome, um, as well as in orbit, I think. Um, yeah, to get more science, which is important. We wanna get more and more, more and more science. Advanced science tech gives me a ton of stuff for uh, stations. I think this is pretty much uh, pretty much the end of what I need for station science, but maybe maybe there's more later. And the other thing it gives me is uh, mining operations. It gives me the drills and stuff. So I kind of want to head towards this. The only problem with that is that these cost 550 and the current level of my facility can only handle things that are less than 500 science. So this row is the last row I have available to unlock. So I've kind of got to figure that out. Um, so I kind of thinking I'm going to head down this path for now. So this is 160, so I'm going to grab that. And then I, ha I have enough to buy one more thing at 300. So efficient flight systems and specialized flight systems don't have any parts. So I'm not going to unlock those. It makes no sense. Um, so let's do composites. I think that's the next thing to do because composites leads to metamaterials and metamaterials leads to the senior docking port, which is what I'm waiting for to do my stations. So we're going to do composites. That's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time for Conquering Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> I don't know. I tried that sign off. It didn't really work, but we'll see you later, guys. Bye.